Hello, chemistry students. Today we will be performing our pH meter experiment. We will first review how to calibrate a pH meter. We will then investigate the pH of household items using a pH meter, litmus paper, and universal indicator. Let's get started. This is the vernier pH sensor that we will be using for this experiment. And we're first going to perform a two-point calibration of our vernier pH sensor using standard solutions pH 4 and pH 7. We first need to select sensors. Then we need to select calibrate. And then we need to select channel 1 pH. We then press calibrate now. We need to remove the storage solution bottle from the electrode and rinse the electrode with deionized water. We'll then place the electrode in our standard solution of pH 4. We need to enter 4.0, wait for the live voltage to stabilize, and then select keep. And you can see that we've now set our first point of calibration. We'll then remove the electrode from the pH 4 solution. We'll rinse the electrode with deionized water. and we'll place the electrode in our pH 7 solution. We'll enter the value of 7.0, wait for the voltage to stabilize, and then select keep then select OK. We have now completed the two-point calibration of our Vernier pH sensor. We will next test the pH of our household solutions using litmus paper, universal indicator, and the Vernier pH sensor that we previously calibrated. We'll be using two types of litmus paper. We'll be using blue litmus paper and red litmus paper. The blue litmus paper will turn red when in contact with an acidic solution. And the red litmus paper will turn blue when in contact with a basic solution. We'll take a glass stir rod, dip it into our vinegar solution, and touch it to a piece of blue litmus paper. And you can see that our blue litmus paper has turned red. We'll next place several drops of universal indicator in our test tube with vinegar. We'll then lower our pH sensor into our vinegar solution. We will next test the pH of our bleach solution by dipping the glass stir rod into the bleach and touching it to our red litmus paper. You can see that our red litmus paper has turned blue We'll then add several drops of universal indicator to our test tube containing the bleach.
and we'll then lower our pH sensor into the bleach solution. We will next test the pH of lemon juice. And please remember that you need to be rinsing your pH sensor with deionized water in between each household solution. So we'll dip our glass to rot in the lemon juice, touch it to some blue pH paper. You can see that our blue litmus paper has turned red. We'll then place several drops of universal indicator in our test tube containing the lemon juice. And we'll lower our pH sensor into our lemon juice. We'll next test the pH of soda. We'll dip our glass stir rod in the soda, touch it to some blue litmus paper. You can see that our blue litmus paper has started turning red. We'll then add several drops of our universal indicator to our test tube containing the soda. and we'll lower our pH sensor into our soda solution. We will next test the pH of liquid dish soap. So we'll dip our glass stir rod in the liquid dish soap, touch it to blue and red litmus paper. This is what our blue and red litmus paper look like with the liquid dish soap. We'll then add several drops of universal indicator. And we'll lower our pH sensor into the liquid dish soap. We will next test the pH of household ammonia. This is what our red litmus paper looks like when in contact with household ammonia. We'll add a few drops of universal indicator to our test tube with the household ammonia. And we'll lower our pH sensor into our solution of household ammonia. We will next test the pH of drain cleaner. This is what our red litmus paper looks like when in contact with drain cleaner. We'll then add several drops of universal indicator. And we'll lower our pH sensor into our solution of drain cleaner.
We will next test the pH of a 10% baking soda solution. This is our red litmus paper when in contact with the 10% baking soda solution. We'll then add a few drops of universal indicator to our test tube with the baking soda solution. And we'll lower our sensor into the 10% baking soda solution. We will next test the pH of tap water. This is our red and blue litmus paper when in contact with tap water. We'll then add a couple of drops of universal indicator to our test tube with tap water. We'll then lower our pH sensor into our tap water. We will now determine the pH of deionized water. We need to dip the glass stir rod into our deionized water and touch it to our red and blue litmus paper. This is our red and blue litmus paper when in contact with deionized water. We will next add a couple of drops of universal indicator to our test tube containing deionized water. We will not be using our Bernier pH sensor to check the pH of deionized water because there's not enough ions in solution for the device to work in deionized water. This concludes the wet lab portion of this experiment. Okay students, we've now learned how to calibrate a Bernier pH sensor and we've investigated the pH of several household substances. This concludes our pH meter experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.